it's Shell C from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you a 6x6 mini canvas that I made using some illustration, some stenciling, some collage, some coloring, and then some chunky textures added with embossing powders. And uh, yeah, I think that's all the things I did. <laughs> this is definitely mixed media because I mixed everything up and it's all mixed and so is my brain, but that's okay. So this started out as a drawing. Um, I wanted to draw a butterfly for a thing on Instagram and my mom has always been obsessed with monarch butterflies and she used to actually hatch them in her classroom. So she would get uh, the milkweed, they, they live on milkweed and she would get milkweed with eggs on it. We'd go, like, go out by the river and get the milkweed and bring it in. And then the eggs would hatch and become caterpillars and the caterpillars would eat all the milkweed leaves and then they would go into their chrysalis and then they would hatch and the little uh, butterflies would eat a little bit of sugar water and their wings would grow strong and then she and the kids in the classroom would release them. So this was something she did for several years and so I always think about monarch butterflies so I decided uh, to draw this monarch and I was using my mechanical pencil. You know, I haven't been using my mechanical pencil very much. I didn't realize how hard it is to see um, on the video when I use this very thin pencil. I love this pencil. My only problem with it is that I keep not being able to refill it. I can't, I can't figure out a good way to refill the lead. So I've been using my other drawing pencils lately, but I sure enjoy this one. And if I can figure out how to ref I mean, that seems so, you know, dumb, right? Why don't you know how to refill your pencil? I don't, and there's no directions. So the only thing I can figure out is to like stick the lids, the leads in the end, and it just doesn't seem very effective. I try putting them on the inside, they don't come back out. I don't know. Anyway, I'm stumped. <laughs> so if anyone is smarter than me and has a really good way of refilling these pencils, let me know. I suppose I could probably do a little bit more research and figure it out myself, but I'm just lazy, so I use my other pencils. So once I was done drawing my illustration, then I'm using my Faber-Castell Artist Pit Pens. These are India ink pens, so they're, they're very permanent. They don't smear or smudge, and you can put other stuff over the top of them. So they're what I prefer when I'm combining uh, drawing or illustration with mixed media because I can put layers over the top. Nothing's going to move these black lines. They're there forever. Um, so if you make a mistake, yeah, too bad. <laughs> the lines are there forever. So I started out with the, um, I think it was the F bullet tip, which is uh, the, probably the fattest of the bullet tips. And then moved on to the S um, for some of the smaller details. And then in the end, in the next section, I end up filling up even more fatter lines using the brush tip. So it's a good idea to have multiple tips. Um, this little four pack that I just bought is new. Um, and then before that I had the bigger package, but uh, some of the tips were getting worn out. The only one now that I don't have an, a really good one is the extra small because it didn't come in the pack of four, but the other sizes that I have used the most did. So I thought, why buy another big pack when I can buy the four pack and replace most of the sizes that I commonly use. So when you use multiple line widths on your illustrations, it makes it more dynamic and interesting. And that's a really good reason to do it. Um, here's where I start. I'm kind of starting the coloring process, but I'm also filling some of the lines in fatter. Uh, the Monarch has a lot of black in its wings. So I'm filling that part in and making those lines thicker. So that's using the brush tip. The brush tip can be a little bit tricky if you're not used to it. You can make very thin lines with it, but you can also make fat lines because it's basically uh, got this very, very thin pointy tip, but then it's also, you know, it widens out quite quickly into a very juicy brush. So it's a little bit harder to use than the bullet tips, unless you're really proficient with using brush tips, which, which I know some of you are. Um, you've been coloring with them and things. So 
filled out the black portions of my butterfly parts of the the head the thorax the I forget what the middle part is <laughs> and the sections on the the wing and then I decided I was happy with that so there's my little illustration it's got the chrysalis it's got the butterfly who's just come out of his chrysalis and is practicing um, spreading its wings and getting ready to fly and it's kind of all about change and how we all go through stages in our life uh, that change us dramatically and that that's not necessarily a bad thing I've been going through some changes in my life and I'm you know trying to adjust to different things and change can be good some of us really hate change a lot <laughs> so we have to make ourselves remember that change can be good so for the coloring um, by the way this paper is a smooth Bristol cardstock I didn't want to use a super thin paper or an absorbent paper I wanted to use something that had a polished um, smooth finish that doesn't bleed through too much it does a little bit and something that I could color because I knew I was going to use like alcohol markers to color so these are my spectrum noir alcohol markers and for the wings I chose four colors of orangey yellowy type colors to make um, the shadowing and the highlight in within the color and then I'm using a white Posca pen this is an acrylic paint pen of course if you guys don't know already um, to add some white highlights and add in some of those little white spots that are around on the wings I don't know that this is 100% accurate representation of a monarch butterfly like don't go and look up how many sections it has on its wing and then tell me I did it wrong because you know what it's an illustration it's art and <laughs> uh, art is 100% interpreted by the artist so it doesn't ever have to look like the thing it only has to represent the thing that's the way art works so unless someone says that they are making a accurate 100% accurate you know scientific drawing then if they put one less section in the wing that's supposed to be there that's just the way it is it's called artistic license and we can make it the way that we perceive the world that's what art is all about how do you perceive the world and how do you express what you see to other people so I'm just gonna say that because I know there are people out there who will say <laughs> it's not accurate I don't actually don't know if it is or isn't I drew it the way I recall and so it's probably not accurate but anyway enough of that I'll get off my soapbox so I have all these charts of all the colors of markers um, that I have and I use them every time I use these markers there uh, the charts were printed off of the spectrum Noir site and then I used all the markers and filled them in and it really really helps me with these markers to see what color is actually inside um, the ends of the markers are not accurate so I can't just go over there to my a little marker storage sorter thing and say okay I want this one this one and this one because it doesn't necessarily come out right so having the charts really makes a difference I can pick the colors that coordinate with that with with each other in the light medium and dark range and that is how I use these markers it's kind of an extra step but it does work and I can also compare my color chart to what I've already colored and decide okay do I want the warm greens or do I want the cool greens do I want the warm browns or do I want the cool grounds or would I rather have gray you know that that's uh, very beneficial to use the chart in that way so I just keep going and getting the chart picking my colors going and picking the three that I have decided on off the rack and then coloring putting those three back and back and forth back and forth until I have completed um, my coloring of my illustration the chrysalis is open I don't know if you can see the jagged edge at the bottom edge <laughs> edge at the bottom but 
that's the reason that I colored it kind of this bluish gray. If the butterfly is still inside, it's a different color. Um, they actually start out almost kind of like a light green and then then they start to thin out so that you can actually see the butterfly wings on the inside. And then once the butterfly breaks out, it's really just kind of a clearish, uh, grayish color. So um, that's what I did. Then I cut it out using the scissors. And then this part, I'm just using an X-Acto knife and a cutting mat to cut out the little sections I couldn't get with the scissors. I also use the black brush marker to go around all the edges and and it cover the edges of the paper anywhere that it was um, looking kind of white. So then this is a six by six canvas panel. I have a I had a pack of 12 of these that I ordered and so I've been messing around with them doing different things on them and it's a good usable size to try things out. Um, what will I do with them? Maybe once I get my Etsy shop up, I'll put them in there for sale. I don't know. <laughs> but I do think that they are a nice size to work with. I grabbed a couple pieces of um, deli paper that had extra paint scraped on it. And then one napkin that I used to blot up some sprayed inks. And I'm using these as a collage background onto my uh, mini canvas to color it. I, I don't do much without collage. I just really enjoy collage. So this is just basically a collage background. I think that those inky pieces of napkin look kind of like watercolor. So I like the way it looks with this combination of papers and it kind of fills in my background and gets me started with, uh, you know, colors that I like in the background. I compared the colors that I chose, the papers that I chose, with the, well, there I'm doing it again, but I picked those papers based on what I had on my illustration, the colors I had on my illustration so that it all coordinates. So then I decided I wanted to use this unfinished stencil from Stencil Girl. This is a Seth Apter design um, because it had the words change and inside on it and it also, it happened to be sitting on my table because I haven't put it away from the last project that I did, which was the uh, crazy painted canvas shoes. By the way, for those of you who are paying attention, my kid absolutely adores those shoes. And um, I think I've started a trend <laughs> where I'm going to be making many pairs of painted shoes because he he liked them. He thought he should have some for his girlfriend. He should have maybe more for himself. So um, while that stencil, I used gesso to stencil that. And then while it was still wet, I put on some of my um, fake beeswax embossing powder. It's a chunky embossing powder. And it of course stuck to the areas that were still wet. And then I heated that and then I decided I better get my illustration on there. And it was a bit tricky to get that illustration to stick down after I put that plasticky embossing powder on there. <laughs> so I should have done that in the opposite. Um, but I just had thrown it on while the, the gesso was still wet thinking, oh, well, the gesso is wet. That'll work. Um, didn't, didn't work quite as well as I wanted. It, I should have collaged that on first. Um, before putting any sort of plasticky powder on there. So then I um, put another layer of ink over it and put some more of that powder on there. It was making an interesting effect. It's, um, it's kind of bumpy and I don't know, uh, clear and shiny. It's just, it's interesting. It's, it's a different thing than what I've normally been doing. It's kind of a new trend and I will link um, in the iCard, I will link the the uh, live stream show where Peg and I used embossing powders on projects. I don't know if I made a speed up of that. If I made a speed up, I'll link the speed up. If I didn't, I'll link the full length show. Um, I made a really interesting piece that would also happen to be a 6x6 six six canvas panel. So... Um, it turned out really interesting and really does look like beeswax. This one doesn't as much because I didn't put the matte medium on at the end. 
So it doesn't look as much like beeswax as the other one. Um, you know, encaustic is a whole thing that that is a whole genre of art where people use beeswax um, and colored beeswax to do art. So it's just kind of, it's a thing and it's kind of fun. So then I decided to use these Emerald Creek um, embossing powders that I got at Creativation. Uh, one of the, the one I'm using right now is called Charred Gold and the other one is Hammered Metal. And then I also have this Verdigree powder that uh, I custom blend a long time ago that looks kind of like um, what happens to copper when it gets weathered. I use that one as well. And it's not a chunky one. Um, it's just a regular, regular grind. And I use that around the edges. Um, looks interesting. It looks fun. And it also adds some more texture. It's just, it's just a fun thing to do. I, I thank Seth Apter for thinking of using embossing powder in mixed media. I, I hadn't really thought of it. Um, I've done a few things with embossing powder, but not, not on my canvases and stuff. And I, I think it's, it's a fun thing to do. So then I had a little tiny paintbrush and some of the reinker for the Versamark ink pad. And I, I just put some of that ink in places on the chrysalis and added that hammered metal powder to it. Now I thought I had too much. So, um, while it was still a bit warm, I used my stylus to kind of edit out some of it and peel it off. So, um, just, you know, added a little bit of silver to that. There is a thing called a Versa marker, which I thought I had, um, that has the Versamark ink in a marker form so that you can put it where you want to put embossing powder, but I couldn't find mine. So I just used a paintbrush and the reinker, which is basically the same, same idea. So then I took, took the stencil again, because I wanted to really highlight the words inside and the words in change, change and inside, inside and change, change inside, inside change. Um, so I isolated those words using some masking tape and applied them to the canvas using the Crafters Workshop metallic modeling paste. And this one is the name of it is antique gold. Kind of looks copper to me. And I thought that it coordinated well with the colors on the butterfly wings. So I was happy with that. The only thing is that I'm, because the surface is so bumpy from the embossing powder, I had a little bit of trouble with the stencil. Um, I had to kind of like peel away some parts of it. Also, I would not recommend trying to, to quickly dry this molding, modeling paste, molding paste with heat tool because it bubbles. And I, I did that. So it looks kind of bumpy and yeah. Not exactly what I wanted, but good enough. Um, you know, live and learn. This is all experimentation. It's not fine art for the museum. <laughs> so I'm not too worried about it. I like how it turned out, but I do wish that they were a little bit less bumpy. I did add some um, Wink of Stella brush. It's not that brand. It's another brand, but it's basically Wink of Stella, which has a very super fine glitter in a brush pin. I added that to the wings and then I heat set it so that it would melt into that um, chunky embossing powder on there. And also I added some shadows around everything using Pit Artist Brush Pin in a dark gray color. And that was pretty much my finishing except for a coat of uh, glossy varnish. So that's what I'm doing now. And then the whole canvas is finished and the, the close-up pictures are coming up at the end. Please remember to give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on your notification bells and share if you want to. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.